Well, well, well. Looks like EA decided to uh, help pay my rent again. I've been playing FIFA Ultimate Team for over a decade now, and this year's Team of the Year promo was one of the worst that we've ever had. Were there good pack crafting opportunities? Yes, if people put in the time, you know, like multiple hours a day, they could craft a lot of packs. Were there good player SBCs? Again, yes. The Sawa card makes me feel things I never thought possible. So what made this promo so bad? Well, it's the fact that it was so harmful to the community and it sets a bad precedent for the future. Back in the forgotten times when dinosaurs roamed the earth and FIFA didn't have SBCs, normal players would load up something like $100 for Team of the Year. They would open their packs, get no Team of the Years, and go back to playing the game because the gameplay, you know, was actually decent back then, so people just played the game for fun. People never expected to pack a Team of the Year and that was fine. What was expected though, was being able to pack a couple high rated players and sell them because packs were tradable. High rated gold cards could go for 100, 200, even 300,000 coins if you got lucky. Now it wasn't as if these cards were in your packs every time. This is EA we're talking about. They aren't exactly known for their generosity. However, packing one or two of them was pretty normal and there were plenty of them that you could pack. Aguero, Ibrahimovic, Hazard, Suarez, Bale, Robin, Icons, Informs, you could pack any of these guys and sell them for at least 100,000 coins. Not to mention that there were cards selling for 70k whose overall were as low as 85. Imagine an 85 overall going for 70k. It just, it's, it's not a thing. You want to know how many gold cards that you could pack during Team of the Year that would give you over 100k? One. Vinicius Jr. for 300,000 coins. The next most expensive gold card you could pack during Team of the Year was Holland for 70,000 coins. Let's do a little experiment real quick. Let's see how many times I would have to pack Vinicius Jr. in order to buy the most expensive Team of the Year card this year. Mbappe is extinct at 15 million coins, meaning you'd have to pack Vinicius 50 times in order to afford him. Now let's compare that to FIFA 16. The most expensive gold you could pack during Team of the Year was Luis Suarez, also going for about 300k. The most expensive Team of the Year was either Team of the Year Messi or Ronaldo, both going for around 2.5 million coins. That means you'd have to pack Suarez only 8 times in order to afford them. If you packed Suarez 50 times like Vinicius, you could afford the entire FIFA 16 Team of the Year squad and still have 5 million coins left over. Now I have to say, it's not as if this was easy to do or that packing these high rated gold cards was very common or that everyone had Team of the Year cards, but you didn't have to pack a Team of the Year in order to afford them. Packs and cards were actually tradable, so the cards that you got and sold mixed with being able to grind divisions for however long you wanted while getting rewarded instantly, plus single player and online tournaments that would give you packs and coins meant that you could actually grind your way to some of the best cards in the game with the grinding involving playing the game. Now, grinding involves stockpiling as many packs as possible for months in advance with usually no payout whatsoever. Grinding during Team of the Year is such an unrewarding experience because the vast majority of us will not pack a Team of the Year card. Just look at how many cards were on the market for PC. 73 cards on the entire market. This was after two weeks of people opening packs, by the way. Now, as I mentioned before, there are lots of upgrade packs that you could put low-rated fodder into in the hopes of getting high-rated fodder. That high-rated fodder can then be put into player SBCs that come out during the Team of the Year period, and typically, you have plenty of time to complete them. Now, on the face of it, that doesn't seem like an issue, right? You're able to get cards like George Best, Alex Morgan, Hamare Sawa. The issue is that you are not getting any closer to packing or getting the Team of the Years that you actually wanted in the first place. Now, this ties into the whole untradable concept from before, but you are trading in all of these high-rated fodder players 
players for cards that, while good, require you to sit there and open packs for hours and hours. People will have this thought of, oh, well I have this untradeable 91 rated Holland card and I don't want to discard them. I guess I'll start that Bruno Fernandez SPC and hope I can complete them. Why aren't there SPCs that you can complete for Team of the Year cards, or at least a slightly worse version of them? Something that allows you to work towards the cards that you actually want in the first place. What about playing the game in hopes of getting coins and packs? Yes, there is Division Rivals and Foot Champs, but you have to either wait for your rewards at the end of the week with Division Rivals, or you have to wait until the weekend to compete and get your rewards and foot champs. The grind from FIFA 16, like I mentioned before, involved tournaments that gave you packs and coins which you can complete over and over, and division seasons which gave out coins that, again, you could complete over and over. Is there anything like that in FC 24? No. Of course there's not, because EA wants you to continue to develop that pack addiction that you have. We all know that these packs can make people develop a gambling addiction. We've seen countless videos made on the topic before, but the one made by Visa shows just how truly predatory these packs can be, and it shows him receiving countless emails and messages about personal struggles with their pack addiction on FIFA. We even see headlines about kids spending thousands upon thousands of their parents' money just to open FIFA packs. The gambling in this game has been increasing the last few years, but it reached a new height with this Team of the Year promo. I mean, did you see the packs that were in stores? You're telling me there's a pack worth 700k, 4500 FIFA points, which is $41 before tax? And was this pack tradable? No, of course it wasn't. Of course they aren't going to make this tradable because they want to make sure no one has coins so they can't afford these expensive Team of the Year cards or buy fodder for the SBCs. It's one thing to release bad promos like the Fire and Ice promo or the Movember promo. It's one thing to release an unfinished product and constantly try to patch it over and over until it's somehow worse than when it started. While I completely hate that these things happen, it doesn't compare, it doesn't even come close to the truly disgusting and despicable acts that EA does in order to try and get kids to pump money into a game that A, will reset in literally a few months time, B, is completely and utterly broken, and C, is run by a company that is truly incompetent. I think by now that a lot of you know I'm not too too happy with the gameplay in FC24, and based on the response that a lot of my videos have gotten recently, you all aren't too happy with it either. The gameplay has been a major problem for at least the past six years, but a newer problem is the amount of mistakes that EA makes. We've seen a lot of blunders the past few years, like the tradable hero pack, chemistry not working on special cards, or the 347 instances when EA had to give out compensation because their Google Translate was broken. What takes the cake though, was that during the last few days of Team of the Year, specifically on January January 30th, EA released a player pick SBC that gave out Team of the Year Messi at a much higher rate than expected. Everywhere on Twitter, you could see people clamoring to compete that player pick SBC. Pictures of Team of the Year Messi were flooding the timeline. Eventually, the player pick was removed about 20 minutes after its release, and at that time, it was just yet another mistake made by EA. I think that some people getting Team of the Year Messi and others not was a major problem that people were rightfully angry about. But that wasn't even the worst part. It was the response by EA that sent everyone over the edge, because their response was nothing. They weren't going to do a single damn thing. The reason they decided to do nothing was because they claimed that only 0.7% of the Ultimate Team player base got Team of the Year Messi. Yeah, right, 0.7% of the player base got Team of the Year Messi. You know, just like how 0.7% of all EA employees like to dress up ostriches and f*** them. The wording on this response is vague, to say the least, and they made it that way on purpose. Saying only 0.7% of the Ultimate Team players received this card is misleading, because this includes accounts that are not active anymore. Second accounts, third accounts, trial accounts, inactive accounts, SBC accounts, all of these were used to make it seem like the problem 
wasn't really a problem at all. Now, I'm not saying that half of the player base got that Team of the Year Messi, but to say that less than 1% did, when the timeline looked like this, when the player pick was active, Color me shocked that EA, the company trying to push gambling onto kids, was trying to manipulate the facts and lie to us. While we've had bad promos in the past, both in the sense that the promo was either boring, like Silver Stars, or released expensive packs like Team of the Season, this promo was something that I've never seen before. Not only was it somewhat boring with the extremely low pack weight and the relatively underwhelming evolutions that came out, seriously, who the hell did this icon center back evolution? But the most expensive packs were released as well. Very low pack weight, untradeable cards, and packs that cost over $40 is a dangerous and a genuinely harmful combination. EA will rack up more money while continuing to ignore the most important part of the game, the actual gameplay, and more kids will start developing these addictions to gambling. We've been on this path since FIFA 19, but I hope this promo has opened up a lot of eyes and shown us that not only is this a company that we can't trust to deliver a good video game, it's a company we can't trust, period. Please be safe and make smart decisions with your money. Thank you guys for watching this video, and we'll see you next time.